Hey, guitar fanatics. You know, recently I did a video that seemed to resonate with a lot of people where we were moving between different pentatonic scales so we can start to change the scale we're playing is the chords that we're soloing over change. Now, if you haven't watched that video, you can watch it here. In that last video, we were playing through entire scale patterns. In this video, we're going to focus on using motifs or smaller musical ideas. But we're going to play those ideas in all 12 keys all over the fretboard. We're going to find those same notes everywhere, all over the entire neck. And ultimately, we're going to connect them from pattern to pattern so we can start playing longer licks and lines. Before we get started, I wanted to say thanks for your support. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let's play some guitar. So for this first exercise, we're going to create a simple motif and then we're going to play it through the circle of fourths staying in the same area of the neck of the guitar. Now, by playing through the circle of fourths, I mean we're going to play the lick starting on a certain note. In this case, we're going to use C minor, the first pattern of C minor pentatonic at the eighth fret. We're going to play the lick in C minor. Then we're going to move up a fourth. A fourth above C is F. So then we would play the lick starting on an F. A fourth above F is B flat. So then we would play the lick starting on a B flat, so on and so on and so on. Like I said, this first example, we're going to be using C minor. We're at the eighth fret. We're just going to start on the C note on the eighth fret of the low E string. We're going to play C, E flat at the 11th fret. We're going to go to the A string. We're going to play G at the 10th fret. And we're going to skip over to the G string and we're going to play an E flat note, an octave above where we started at the 8th fret. And then we're going to drop back down to the D string and we're going to play the C note at the 10th fret. So what have we got here with this motif? We've got the root note, minor third, the fifth, we jump up to the minor third, an octave above where we started. And then we drop down to our root. And so that is our identifiable harmonic pattern. We're going to move that through the circle of fourths. So we played it starting on C. If I move over one string, I got an F note at the eighth fret of the A string. Let's find our lick again. We've got root, minor third fifth, jump over to the minor third octave above, drop down to the root. I move up a fourth from F. I go over to B flat at the eighth fret of the D string. I've got my root, minor third, fifth, minor third an octave above, back to the root. Now, a fourth above B flat is E flat. I've got an E flat at the 11th fret of the low E string. Don't even have to change positions. So I've got my root, minor third, fifth, minor third an octave above, and back to the root. Fourth above E flat is A flat. Same thing. Now, fourth above A flat is D flat. I've got D flat at the ninth fret of the low E string. G flat is right above D at the ninth fret of the A string. I've got a B flat at the ninth fret of the D string. Then a fourth above G flat is B, which is at the ninth fret of the D string. A fourth above B is E. I drop down to the low E string at the 12th fret. I've got an A at the 12th fret of the A string. Then we've got a fourth above A is D. I can go back down to my low E string, the D at the 10th fret. Fourth above D, I've got G at the 10th fret of the A string. 
and we've gone all the way through the circle of fourths. We're back to the C note. I could move up to, for instance, the C at the 15th fret of the A string, start the whole thing over, and that's what I want you to do. I want you to find C notes all over the neck and play through that circle of fourths with that motif. Then I want you to make up your own motifs, do the whole thing again which leads us to the first variation of this exercise, which is playing it in time. You know, playing anything in time, you feel a little bit of added pressure at first, but it really helps you internalize that new skill. So if this is super new to you, you might want to play the first four notes of our motif as an eighth note and play the fifth note as a half note uh, at a slow tempo, something like this. One, two, three, four. So you're changing up a fourth every four beats. As you get the hang of it, as you get used to it, you might want to speed up a little bit and you could even do it as 16th notes. So the first four notes are 16th notes. The fifth note is a quarter note, so you'd be changing up a fourth every two beats, like this. One, two, three, four. And so on. Challenge yourself, challenge yourself with the tempo, challenge yourself with the subdivisions you're playing. It's gonna pay great dividends. Exercise number two, we're gonna work on finding a motif in all five patterns of the minor pentatonic scale. Now you could use major pentatonic scale also, but today for this example, we're gonna use minor pentatonic and we're gonna go down to G minor starting at the first pattern at the third fret. Let's make up a nice bluesy sounding phrase. I'm gonna play C, D, F, G, B flat, and then come back to G. Now the object of this exercise is to find this phrase in each of the five patterns and play it as many times as it can be played. Usually it's twice within a pattern, although sometimes you can only find it one time. You're gonna find that each time you play it, you're gonna have to use different fingerings. Sometimes you come up with a fingering and it might feel unusual or awkward, but this is actually a good thing because when things feel different, when things feel awkward, when you're out of your comfort zone, you're burning new pathways into your brain. So again, let's go back to our phrase in pattern number one. I started on the C note at the third fret of the fifth string, but I've got another C note at the fifth fret of the G string, so I can play this pattern again. Let's move up to the second pattern of G minor pentatonic. We'd be at the sixth fret. Pattern starts on a B flat note, but there's a C note at the eighth fret of the low E string. I can play my pattern. There's another C note at the fifth fret of the G string. Play the lick again. I'm gonna move up to the third pattern. We'd be at the eighth fret. Starts on a C note. There's another C note at the 10th fret of the D string. Now if we move up to the fourth pattern, we'd be at the 10th fret. We're only gonna be able to play it once if we do it conventionally. There's a C note at the 10th fret of the D string. Moving up to the fifth pattern of G minor, we'd be at the 13th fret. There's a C note at the 15th fret of the A string. There's a C note at the 13th fret of the B string. Cheat again a little bit and play three notes on that high E string. And then we're back to our first pattern at the 15th fret. So what did we learn here? Number one, if you're not super familiar with all your notes on the fretboard, targeting a single note and finding it all over the neck really helps burn it into your brain in a manageable way. And you're gonna start to know where other notes are by their proximity to the note you're targeting. In other words, if you can find a C note, you can find a D note or a B note too. As with all the exercises I recommend to you, I want you to play this in all 12 keys. 
it's so easy to get caught in the trap of playing things in our favorite spots and our favorite keys. And we can kind of fool ourselves into thinking we know a concept a lot better than we actually do. Let's check out exercise number three. Exercise number three, we were going to take what we were doing in exercise two, which was finding a phrase everywhere we could in each of the five patterns on the neck. And we're going to expand on that. In this exercise, we're going to make up a phrase and we're going to move the basic fingering structure of that phrase from pattern to pattern in real time so that we're doing it smoothly and continuously. Now I've got three variations of this exercise for you. Now in this first variation, we're going to start off with an ascending pattern of six notes, G minor pentatonic. We're going to start on the G on the low E string. We're going to play G, B flat, C, D, F, and G. So basically we're just playing the first six notes of G minor pentatonic. And when we get to that G note, which I'm playing with my third finger, I'm going to slide into that note with my index finger. So I've done a position shift and then I'm going to descend two notes on the A string. So I'm going to play the F note and I'm going to finish the phrase on the D note at the fifth fret of the A string. So that pattern again is So now we've shifted to the second pattern of G minor, and I want you to use that same structure. We're going to ascend six notes. Once we get to the sixth note, we're going to slide into it with the index finger and then descend two notes on the A string. So I've shifted to the third position. So I would play my six notes, shift, descend two notes. I'm in the fourth position. Play my six notes. Shift. Descend. Now I'm in the fifth position. My shift and my descending two notes. So I've made my way through all five patterns. That's variation number one. Variation number one, instead of sliding to the next pattern with shifting with our index finger, we're going to shift with whatever finger is playing the sixth note of our pattern. So pattern number one, my third finger is playing the G note at the fifth fret of the D string. So I'm going to slide up to the second note of the second pattern, which is B flat at the eighth fret. Then I'm going to descend down to that last note on the A string. then I would continue in that manner through all five patterns. For variation number two, so far, we've been doing everything on the bottom three strings. What I'm going to ask you to do is go back to the original exercise three and variation number one, and I want you to play it on the different string sets. So for instance, we would go to the A string, use the same fingering. So we're playing six notes, shift up with the first finger, then descend two notes. This time it would be on the D string continue that through all five patterns, then shift to the next string set. Doing this exercise on the different string sets, I promise will put you in some spots that feel unfamiliar to you. And if it does feel really familiar to you, then you really know your fretboard and I need to come up with some harder exercises. For variation number three, we're going to combine the first two variations and we're going to move across the different string sets as we move up the next through the five patterns. So if we use our original variation, I play my first six notes, shift with my first finger, descend to the D note, fifth fret of the A string. Now, rather than starting over like we did in the original variation at the B flat, that D that we ended on, that is our new starting point. And we're going to play six notes, shift, descend. 
Now I'm at the B flat. That's my new starting point. I'm on the D string at the eighth fret. Ending up on an F note at the 10th fret of the G string. There's my new starting point. Now I'm at the C note at the 13th fret of the B string. That's my new starting point. Now I'm gonna run out of strings. So I'm just gonna shift and end at the G note at the 15th fret of the high E. Now, I want you to take that exercise starting with each of the five patterns. For instance, if I start with the second pattern instead of at the first pattern, I'm gonna end up in some different spots on the neck you're gonna really get familiar with all the different transition points between the patterns, and I bet you you're gonna start coming up with some really great licks. And of course, it should go without saying, I want you to play this in every key. So I know I said I was gonna give you three variations. This is actually a bonus variation. We're going to do primarily what we did in variation number three, but instead of making a slide to shift positions, we're gonna make a clean position shift and we're going to shift by jumping up to the note that we would have played down to had we done our original variations. So for instance, in that first pattern, we play six notes. This is in the original variation. Slide, descend two notes on the A string, which brings us to the D note. But instead, in the bonus variation, we're gonna use that D note as our transition point. We're gonna play up six notes. Then we're gonna move directly to that D note, play up six notes. In our original variation, we would have slid and come down two notes to our B flat, but in this variation, we're gonna jump right to the B flat. That pattern, we would have dropped down to the F. We're gonna move right to our F at the 10th fret of the G string. That pattern, we would drop down to the C note at the 13th fret of the B string, but instead we're gonna go right to it. Put it all together, sounds like this. What that's gonna do is gonna get you shifting and moving through those patterns. You're gonna come up with some movements where you move forward and back, and it kind of starts sounding Eric Johnson. -y. He's really great at those clean position shifts. Joe Bonamassa, if you're into that, Eric Gales uses that kind of stuff. So again, I want you to play it starting in each of the five patterns. I can't emphasize that enough, and I cannot ever emphasize enough, play it in all 12 keys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get some good information out of it. If you put in a little time with these exercises, you're gonna be buzzing around the fretboard like a boss before you know it. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support. As always, you keep practicing. I'm gonna keep making these videos that are gonna help you make sense of soloing.